going to bring into your lives on a daily basis, right? It's what is going to cause you all to be successful. <coughs> the mindset of being able to understand what is happening to that water and that toothpaste, right? There, and the utilization of that is what is going to bring these two things together to make you a successful entrepreneur. So you've perfectly said that the end result is important. What I'm saying is do not ignore the means of how you're going to get there. Be disciplined. You know, understand what you guys want to do. Today the world is, is absolutely open to you guys. You can choose any field you want. Whatever field you want to choose in. You've got to be entrepreneurial. Let me tell you, you go out and work for somebody. Don't think that's not entrepreneurial. In your job, you've got to be entrepreneurial. You've got to be worried about the toothpaste and the water. You've got to think about your teeth and the brush. And if at any step of the way you don't, right, there's somebody doing it, especially in our country, where the competition is huge, where everything is, is not on a level playing field. Everyone is ready to put in more than 24 hours a day, as opposed to most other countries in the world today. You guys have to be thinking constantly. Do not ignore situations, you know. Get involved. I'm going to tell you an example of how I met Mr. H.P. Rama. I was, um, I had just been admitted to my class in school in 2003. I was an Indian in, in the United States uh, at a, you know, at a great school. And I was um, just sitting by in, in one of the classrooms. And Mr. Rama walks into the class. Nobody in the class knew who he was. and. Uh, Neither did I. And in fact, I don't even know if the strategy professor or professor was in there knew who HP was. He walked around the class and he walked up the stair and I was sitting, you know, at a corner chair like that. And I stood up and sat on, on the side and made a place for him. There was a place for him to sit anywhere else. He sat beside me. And that was my third month in the US. First time I'm going abroad to study. Third month there. and. Before the class was over in 40 minutes, HP and I forged a bond that is equal to one of the most important relationships I have in my life. First, in 30 minutes, he offered me a job. In 33 minutes, I accepted the job. Everyone else was running around looking for a job in school, right? Because that's the most important thing you go to Cornell is to get a great job. I was sitting there and I had my job in the 33rd minute of the class that I first time I met HP. Do not ignore a situation. Be present. Be right there. Feel it. To be an entrepreneur, to get to the next level is everything in life. And whatever you do, you're going to be an entrepreneur. And to maximize that opportunity, to use every resource, except especially your time, right? Be there. Be right there. At the end of all of whatever you guys want to do, however you guys are going to progress through, right? I, I have one take that I want you guys to remember. And that is, from having filtered through all of human nature and all of these things, right? You guys need to be sincere. <coughs> you guys need to be honest. If you lie, you've got to be honest about lying too. If you do anything, any thought you guys think. I want you guys, when I reflect back on when I was 18 years old, right? I did many things for many other reasons. You guys are here. You guys have the opportunity to be told that what you all are thinking is respectful, is great. Whatever the thought that comes to your minds, your minds, you guys are unique, each one of you. You guys have to respect every single thought that comes to your minds and be sincere about it. However bad someone else may think, however bad someone you may think it is, it's your thought. And it deserves all the regard. Don't let that go. Be sincere to every step you take in the world today. And entrepreneurship is at your door, it's at your, it's at your reach, it's at your fingertips, and you can grab it with, with your whole life. So, are there any questions to ask? I can tell you about my story of how I got here, and it's a. Uh, I think it's purely opportunistic. I don't want to go into how I, you know, I, I, I was uh, I was 16 years old when I joined. I, I told you my dad was not really keen about my education. 
He wasn't uh, saying you've got to study this or got to. And in fact, when I wanted to study a master's, he said you're wasting your time. But it was nice that I had the option. My mother is a doctor, and so she was, uh, you know, though didn't have much say in it, she was quite excited about us stu studying. So what happened was uh, I went away to a, a construction site. I learned how to build because that's what the family did. We came from a hugely um, a male dominated construction business. And I was put in there at the age of 16. I you know, would take, away, take off from college, school, and go and work on the construction site. And that's where I, I learned all of my business of man management, watching people, man watching, understanding people. All of that stuff was learned at you know, that stage. And then my family was building a hotel. And we got, uh, because the owner failed, he couldn't build the hotel because he ran out of money, we ended up with us because we were owed a lot of money in the deal. So we took over the hotel and I was sent there, you know, uh, fortunately, when I look back on it now, that I was asked to go complete the hotel, sell it and come back, and recover our losses and come back. It was a fun experience when I learned that if I you know, just managed to complete the hotel and just began to operate it, in one month the value would, would triple, triple. So once I operate, began operating it, I couldn't let go of it. I had to keep it. And today, I, that's my anchor, as I believe, in uh, my profession. My, I'm, I, whatever happens in life, I will always be a hotelier first, though I'm in the construction business. And um, it was a long story. We went through a lot of upheavals. We had a severe labor union issue at the hotel. But they're all part of your wanting to be sincere. They're all a part of you wanting to solve the problem. They're all part of the deal of wanting to keep your teeth clean without damaging them, without wasting too much of water or toothpaste. It's all about thinking your steps through. So I think I want to open this up. I want you guys to ask me questions. I want you guys to think through what I've said. I want you to fight me on it. I want you to think it through. I want you to tell me what you guys are thinking. Anyone? OK, you want me to do this? OK, so do you want to be an entrepreneur? Oh, yeah. tell me. Yeah. Do you like entrepreneurship? Do you understand entrepreneurship? Do you want it? Do you, are you fighting for it? Or what do you want out of li your life? You're here in a great setting. You know, this classroom uh, is uh, almost a temple to me. What do you want? What, are you looking at entrepreneurship? What are you thinking? Did you use the mic? I know. <laughs> What do you want out of life? Tell me. Go for it. Whatever you want. I become a, a successful businessman. Business person. You want to be an entrepreneur then? <laughs> right? You want to? Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do? A diamond business. A diamond business merchant. Fantastic. Okay. And have you got plans for it? No, no not yet. How old are you? 17. 17. Oh, fantastic. I wish I was 17 years old. <laughs> anyone, anyone who wants to tell me about their thoughts. I want to hear someone who says, I want to hear, I want to hear the, the pulse of what you guys are thinking. You know, the, the girls in this class, you guys are going to be, you know, today, they're saying the girls are equal to the boys, right? The minute they say a girl is equal to a boy, she's five times stronger. Okay, I'm serious about that. So you guys think it through. Tell me, some, there are so many girls here. Are any of you thinking, what are you guys thinking, you know, as a force, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a unit? What is in it for you guys? Forget about, you know, I want to tell you all, forget about the next five years of your lives. It's already cast. Five years of your lives is already in place and you can't change it. Sir, I've got a question. Yeah. Right now you said entrepreneurship, entrepreneur and a businessman, they are same. Yeah, to allow, you can, I mean, generally but lose the class. As a student, I had studied entrepreneurship as a subject. Yeah. So what I came to know was that all entrepreneurs are businessmen, but all businessmen are not entrepreneurs. 
Yeah, that's an easy classification. See, I'm so. Like, what is the difference between entrepreneur and businessman? Exactly what I told you. See, I could have inherited a business today from my father, right? And kept it the same as it was 20 years ago. And done nothing to improve the state of my staff, my people, the quality of the business. I'm a businessman. But if I took that little hotel that I had and made it something, made it five hotels today, gave 500 people employment as opposed to 50 people, improved my community where I lived, right? Endure, improved my own self in the bargain, expressed my own personality, and that would be entrepreneurship. You see what I say? Thank you, sir. Yeah.